we figured out how to inject hot molten plastic into 3D printed molds without melting them. We're using a regular filament printer and somehow the mold survived repeated plastic injections. Never designed a mold before, this is my first mold. <laughs> Look at that, that is pretty <laughs> close. Can this be done with PLA molds? Nope. ABS molds? Nope. So what's the secret? Well, the reveal is coming, but first we need to understand why this should be impossible. As always, before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Injection molding typically requires strong, heat-resistant molds, usually made from machined aluminum or steel. This is in order to withstand the high temperature and pressure of the incoming molten plastic. They're expensive, slow to make, and need specialized equipment. We've already proven on this channel that you can cheat the system by using resin printers. But those are still resins, which when cured are much more heat tolerant than your everyday filament 3D printer. So how on earth did we pull this off with an FDM printer? First, we need a mold design, so I used the free template we provide on our website, imported my part into Fusion 360, aligned it, did a quick Boolean subtraction, and boom! ready to print in minutes. The reason to use this template is that it pops right into our mold backers, which makes making molds a two minute task. Remember when it took forever? Anyways, I send the file to my Bamboo X1C and wait 12 hours for the prints to finish using this magical filament. With the molds in my hands, I pull out Injecto 3, my favorite plastic injection molder, and a set of our mold backers which keep everything aligned and also make swapping molds quick and precise. You can find all of this stuff on our website. Let's start injecting. I'm using this orange easy flow plastic which I'm running at 190 degrees Celsius. Hot enough to flow well and get good detail but low enough temperature to avoid plastic degradation or sink marks. Here's the catch. If you inject plastic at 190 C into PLA or ABS molds, your molds are toast. They deform, they fuse to your part and it's game over. But our special FDM mold didn't do that. It held up. So what is this mystery FDM material? Material. It's called polyethylene terephthalate with carbon fiber reinforcement, or in other words, PET-CF, and it's a game changer. Here's why PET-CF works when PLA and ABS fail. It has a heat deflection temperature of around 155 Celsius, which is way higher than PLA at 60 or ABS at 100. This means PLA and ABS molds start softening and losing shape long before PET-CF even starts to care. The carbon fiber infused in the PET plastic is about 20% by weight and makes the material more stable dimensionally and the carbon fiber which is a good thermal conductor also helps dissipate the heat from the plastic itself. This prevents the PET plastic in the mold from softening. The surface finish when printing PET CF is also super smooth and I don't know why. The layer lines tend to disappear so if you know the reason for this, please let me know in the comments. This definitely makes for a good mold material, giving us smooth walls, especially when paired with our mold backers to keep things tight and aligned. Now, are there better filament options for this purpose? Yeah. PET-CF is only in third place for mechanical and thermal performances. The second best option is actually nylon CF, and first place goes to PPS-CF, which is polyethylene sulfide. So why did we use PET-CF? Well, because looking at price versus performance for this application, the PET-CF can be purchased for just $36 per one kilogram spool, while PPS-CF is $180 per one kilogram spool. If PPS-CF gives us 50% more injections, it wouldn't be worth the investment because thanks to our mold backers, it takes just five seconds to replace the PET molds with the new PET CF molds when needed, which gives a much cheaper cost per part injected. Other than that, making batches of parts at home or even just testing prototype molds before sending them out to be machined just got a whole lot easier. With the right setup, Injecto 3, mold backers, and a bit of Fusion 360, you can prototype functional parts fast. If you want to try this at home, Everything I use today, including the Injecto, the mold kits, and sample files are available at actionbox.ca. Thank you for watching, and let me know in the comments, what weird material should we play with next?